check. Right on, man. We're rolling. All right. <coughs> so I just listened to the new record, man. The the black, the black heaven, right? Yep. That black comes out heaven. Friday. Yeah, March sixteenth on Nuclear Blast Records. Huh? Is that your first one on Nuclear Blast? Or? Yes, it is. Yep. Cool. Yeah. How they treat? Go ahead. How they treating you so far? So far, it's been great. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of. It's been a little bit of a crazy ride so far since yeah. everything's come together. But um, yeah, just recording went really smooth, and uh, the process of getting the record all together. You know, as far as like, you know, the coordinating the schedules of turning the art in and getting all the you know just the little the behind the scenes stuff that goes into making a record went really smooth working with them and they have um that's at rancho de la luna right yeah that's joshua where we tree it, yeah but uh nuclear blast has a, a a nice staff of people that take care of every little thing that needs to be taken care of and yeah i, I watched those cool. those videos that they had posted on youtube where you guys were at the you know at the studio and, and yeah. you're talking about that whole process and I, I don't know. They, they seem like a really cool label. Yeah, man. I'm definitely like excited to you know try this this out and and see what happens and you know work with. Uh, they're, they've been really good people to work with so far. So yeah, it's been good. How, how was the studio experience? I mean, did you guys go into the studio with a bunch of pre-written stuff or was it organic on the spot? I mean, how do you how you how'd that work out? Um, it was all pretty. Uh, it was it was all written before we went okay. to the studio, and um, we didn't have a lot of time beforehand to get it all together. So it was still pretty, you know, uh, somewhat loose. Yeah. Um, and uh, there were some things that we did change when we got there. But um, I think we did like over the course of a few months, Isaiah would come down, and uh, he'd come down for like two or three days, and we just get in the room for like two three days and work on stuff and that was like maybe like once every month for like three or maybe three or four months it, so it, it sounded awesome i mean thanks I, I, i'm i'm new to earthless i mean but i just i just started getting into you guys and and that that new album just it's it, it's very organic from what i heard it just feels like i don't know like it's it, it blossomed like uh, i don't know thanks how a lot really, man yeah i really liked it yeah i think um we found the right mix of uh, of working on stuff enough time to get it to uh, a, a tight enough point that it was like structured, you know, because yeah, yeah. they're actual songs, but with enough room looseness to still get in the studio and kind of like, okay, have these the parts that were, you know, where there's the solos going on and a little bit more kind of the jamminess, you know, still have a little bit of that there. But just not like on the older records where it was one side of an LP. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. a little bit more contained, but there's still some, yeah. you know, places to go off like yeah. we like to. Still stuff, very so. fluid. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it was cool to be able to um, also just be in the studio and stay there for a week and just have nothing to focus on except, you know, these this record. And, um, and so that really was a cool mindset to get into yeah. for, the, for the band something we haven't done before so yeah it's kind of uh i like studios like that that kind of take you out of the hustle bustle of uh, you know a big city and forces you to focus you know yeah or usually we're just used to like okay after the session we, everyone goes home yeah or to wherever right. you know and stuff so this was our home yeah yeah <laughs> so that's that's always kind of cool yeah it's kind of like a you know brotherhood you know you're all in there together and it you know buckle down and that should should out. an awesome experience. Yeah, because um, there's a house there, like a band house that all the bands stay up in. It's separate from the studio, but right. um, we, would, we would just walk up there, and it had a you know full kitchen, and they um, they had like a cool little living room with like a stereo record player, a bunch of records just from yeah. everywhere. So it's we my would just jam. make some food <laughs> and, and hang out and listen to records and stuff as a band. We haven't done that in a while, so it's cool to just kind of like throw on these different things and you know some of these things ended up giving some cool last minute ideas to like absolutely yeah like maybe we could change something to maybe sound like this more this tone or something like that so it was cool to really yeah lots of cool amps there Uh, lots of great guitar sounds the gear there was 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 insane i mean for isaiah you know as a guitar player he was just like in heaven because yeah i bet yeah he was just playing all sorts of different shit yeah, you kind of going with an idea, but when you're in a studio like that, it has a ton of gear. 
it can just take a song to a completely different place, you know, with just yeah. different sounds that you can play with, you right. know. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's um, another thing that was that I always forget about in the studio is that like sometimes your own gear isn't always the best sound in the studio, right? right? For you know what you're doing, and there was a couple songs where his uh, his Stratocaster, which is pretty much his main go-to guitar for right. the whole duration of the band, it's always come in and out, you know. But, um, you know, in the one song, it, it just wasn't sounding as full as it should have. And so I think there was a white Gibson uh, Les Paul Jr. that was there that we were like, oh, let's try that one. And that was just like the perfect, yeah. like really full, thick sound. And it was cool, man. He was so stoked, like you, playing different shit. Do you guys layer guitars and do a bunch of different tracks usually when you're playing? Or do you keep it to a live? I mean, a little bit of both, you know. There's yeah. like the solos and stuff are definitely there's different stuff going on at different times. But right. For the most part, there's always a, a just a really basic raw like track. Stuff, right. So, yeah. yeah. And then you just do overdubs yeah. to that raw track. So you yeah. guys are all playing together in a room and yeah. recording all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Just That's live. Cool. I kind of figured it because you I mean you, you you have that jam element, you know, which yeah. is so appealing to us. Um, I'm fairly new to Earthless too. I've heard about you guys for a number of years, and I listened to the last record from the Ages, mm -hmm. the instrumental record, yeah. like six months ago, and I was like, "Oh, I'm on board with these guys." Okay, and I I <laughs> got turned on. I don't know if you even know this, but the the comedian <coughs> Bill Burr. Yeah, gave yeah. you guys a big awesome rant on his podcast, and he's like, yeah. "Guys, you guys got to go." He he. You guys blew his mind. He he saw you at the uh, Troubadour, I believe. That's right. Yeah, you know, I actually met him that night. Um, oh, he came out and said hi. Uh, That's one of well, my favorite. He was a comedians. mutual friend of um, of my buddy John Theodore that plays in Queens. Um, okay. So we're we're pretty good buddies. But then John didn't tell me Bill was coming with them. And then, uh, but just after the show, we were just talking and stuff. And and then uh, uh, then Bill was there. But I. You know, I didn't know who Bill was. I've heard of his name, and right? Her knew he was a comedian, but I didn't know what he looked like really, and I'd never heard his stuff before. But just yeah, the few minutes that I was talking to him, I already knew this guy was like hilarious. Yeah, he was hilarious. Just, he was hilarious. He was so then dude. to hear the the podcast, you know, a little bit later was was pretty funny. Yeah, cool to have somebody like that give you accolades it's like well that's what turned me on i was that's, like well, yeah he, he obviously must, helped <laughs> he, he must know what you know he must know what he's talking about he's, he's a musician too and <laughs> yeah he's uh yeah he know, plays drums yeah mm -hmm. so uh <coughs> i got turned on through that through that and that's uh cool. which brings the brings me to the next question that last one was instrumental <clears throat> what made you guys put vocals on this new one i mean um, more uh prominent vocals i guess you guys have done vocals in the past right just a couple songs here yeah. and there, a couple covers or you know, a couple originals too for like because Isaiah can splits, actually sing, you know, and he sings very well. Yeah, we've it's we've like, always known that too. It just was a thing that like you, you're not allowed to sing. Right we now. never forced it. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, we had people throughout the years come up and offer to audition or <laughs> to like be our right. singer and stuff, and we're just like, no, it's you know, it's cool, it's taken care of. Yeah. And, um, you know, but on this thing, I think uh, thinking going back to from the ages. There, that song on the record is like 31 minutes long. Yeah. So yeah. we're just like, okay, what are we going to do in this next thing? Um, we didn't want to repeat what we did on that. There right. was no need to write another song that's like half an hour long. We probably couldn't have or didn't have the time to. I mean, that was a song that was from the era of the band when everyone lived in the same city and practiced a couple times a week, two, three times right. a week. And um, we didn't have that convenience to just do you a 30-minute jam. Take time to build... Yeah. It's actually a pretty structured song if, you know, for us, like there's parts that we were just like these, you know, really goes in, in a certain time, but there's lots of space in between it to go and wander off and come back to these parts. Yeah. But it takes time to make those things. And yeah, we didn't sure. really have that convenience this time. So and also we just kind of were on the board you know, the same board to mentality to just try this different thing, you know, and um we didn't think it was going to be four songs with vocals, but um, we thought maybe two songs. Like two, Isaiah had two ideas right off the bat. And then um, once we were actually in a room playing, these other two things came up, and uh, we were stoked on them. So. When I was uh, researching you guys, uh, there was something I wanted to ask you. Uh, it said that you guys kind of have this, this the stoner rock label put on you guys, but you guys don't really embrace that 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 I guess label because 
I don't know. Is it is there like a reason? I mean, obviously you guys. I don't think you guys are stoners, but it seems like that type of music. You know, I don't know how to say this, but it, it's a very it's a cultural thing, and even if it's not that label of the the music isn't a bunch of potheads. Mm-hmm. That 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 kind of vibe is always seems like a. I don't know, cool vibe. I like Stone Rock. <laughs> so I guess why yeah. you would sh- not want that label kind of. Um, I think is that just. Even true. I mean, we don't, you know, honestly, we don't think about it a whole lot. But, no. uh, you know, to but to us, uh, what we grew up with, um, it's like we don't. I mean, we like the bands that kind of um, started that whole thing, yeah. like, mm-hmm. you know, Nebula and Fu Manchu and stuff like that. Isaiah played in Nebula for a year or so. He played bass with them. And cool. We're buddies with those guys, but I mean, I don't think we sound like those guys at all, really. Um, yeah. We, you know, but we don't really call ourselves a psychedelic band either, you know what yeah. I mean? Um, just the stuff that we started the band influenced by was, you know, more um, like the heavy Japanese blues, right. obscure bands, and like, like kraut rock, which is, you know, the German gotcha. stuff, and just like the classic rock mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah, but um, that, that's definitely the vibe in that. Yeah, which so... Is, I guess genres are... I mean, being a musician myself, I mean, I've had people ask what my band sounds like, and yeah. I can't even fucking tell. It, them it is hard. Yeah. I mean, I just I, think stoner rock is just kind of such a bland term, like for me, like it just gotcha. kind of means like, you know, very simple tuned down riffs. You know, that's yeah. what I kind of picture. But like, you, you know, like if people want to call us that, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, we don't, yeah, we don't really I, care. I guess it's the way you look at it. I mean, yeah. when I think of stoner rock, I think of you know Led Zeppelins and clutches and and things of that nature. So yeah. I guess it's label. What we don't need no fucking stinking labels. It's yeah. subjective. Well, it, it, it was. <laughs> it is. It was you know made by the labels and, and for a totally. Way to it's an easy. Yeah. It's an easy marketing thing, and you know that's that's fine. If people yeah. want to call us that, you know. <laughs> You can call us a coffee rock band. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. like, Whatever we drink a lot of coffee, man. <laughs> so oh, why, man? That's, I, I would, that, that would be an honor. It's like coffee rock. That rocks. Yeah. Yeah, I'm down with that. Like Start your own genre, man. Barbecue Shit. psych or something. Yeah. <laughs> you love barbecue too. So. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I could live on both of those forever. <laughs> so how long are you guys in the States? And then you're moving out, doing a across the... the Behind, right? Yeah, we're doing this for like another two weeks, and then uh, I think we're home for like maybe five days, and we go over to Europe and the UK. That's exciting for most of next month, which is April. And then, um, man, yeah, we're gonna probably do the most touring that this band has done in a year ever. So, um, yeah, it's a great product, to it. man. You got to get out there and pimp it. Yeah, you know, I mean, for me, um, I'm trying to think. You know, we're we're here at the Grog Shop in the uh, on the window there. Yes, There's sir. a band called Hot Snakes. And my face is on that poster. And they just played here a couple of nights ago. I wasn't with them, but um, <laughs> I I played in that band. I played another band called Rocket from the Crypt, and then uh, I play in another band called Off. And yeah. so all this time throughout the years, um, I've always played in these other bands, per, you know, and and they've always had this touring thing set in motion and had more of an organized kind of thing behind right. them. And Earthless has always been around these other projects. Right. You know, even though we've been busy the last, you know, maybe five years here and there. But um, this is kind of the first time I can honestly say that, like, I've been able to put Earthless as the priority. Yeah. And maybe not tell the other bands, like, oh, sorry, I don't have time for you anymore. But, right. you know, sometimes you just got to make decisions and. Yeah, with that many projects, for sure. Decide what's the most important to you and what's the funnest you know what you have the most fun and what you love and you know what i mean and i'm i'm stoked to be able to give it that attention yeah you know, this this time around with this new record and stuff that's and cool that so. blows me away when they're touring musicians are doing multiple projects like uh, i was telling you before we turned the mics on we had joey castillo on oh man. and, and yeah. he's on he's a he's madman like, yeah like drummers just, especially i mean because it's yeah. like we're just like yeah we just got to stay busy and and if you want to even attempt to make a living make somewhat of a living you got to really the hustle yeah you got to hustle it and uh you know this lifestyle is not for everyone uh you know it's like mm-hmm. people don't they might think touring is some luxurious thing. Mm. Go out in a van and go on tour for a <laughs> month, and oh yeah, that's you'll you'll know who's wired for it. And you who's give that not. speech to your the girlfriends and the wives. You know, it's like it's not 
Oh yeah, it's not groupies in the in the backstage like you think. Here, it is. here we are in a, doing an interview in a van yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. Cold in, front of the garage in, the, in the winter time in Cleveland, <laughs> Ohio. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know the money's tight, and you know we got a, just enough time before it turns uh, below twenty uh, degrees in here. Yeah, <laughs> Start blowing lucky. smoke in this mic. Some Chipotle. <laughs> we get a little, lift yeah. a bunch of heavy shit yeah. twice a night. Yeah, you think you guys can help load out the drums later on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where are you at now? Come on, groupies. Make it happen. <laughs> yep. Yeah, man, we just do regional stuff, and it's kind of a pain in the ass oh, there, sometimes. There's a groupie with a shopping cart and, like, uh, yeah. a, a bag of... You'll have that in this neighborhood. ...pillows or something in there. Okay. Make sure <laughs> you leave the van doors locked. Yeah. Are you guys uh, are you guys doing the festival circuit in the summer in uh, or yeah. next month? Well, does that start uh, next, next month? month. Yeah, it's, it's a couple more months. I don't months, think right? we'll go do the festival stuff in Europe till like the summertime. I think. Cool. So yeah, that's what's. I'm not sure when that starts. Like June, TV. July. Yeah. You guys have done road burn and all that before, right? We're doing that next month. Actually, that's the only festival we're doing in April. So. Oh, cool. Yeah. So you're just flying out for road burn and coming back? Um, no. We're no, doing you a said tour you're going. Yeah, you're going to the UK. That and leads then. up to road okay. burn. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. And there. Stuff. Any any other? Do you, does Nuclear Blast like hook you up with the other other bands on the label? And you guys do tours like that, or um, we haven't done that yet. Um, you guys would be perfect. Not how it promotion. usually works, but I mean, I mean, I'm, I would assume that would probably uh, be an easy thing to do. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. But yeah, you guys would kill it with Corrosion. Yeah, they're be cool fit. Their new record is fucking amazing. Oh, Have you cool. heard that yet? No, I haven't heard it yet. I oh. like those guys a lot though. Yeah, yeah. they're awesome. They're we're good just, guys too. So. We just saw them last month. Got oh, to sweet. say hello. Got to got to do the fist bump, you know. And it's back with Pepper too, I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I like those guys. Even their one without Pepper was fucking shredding, man. Cool. It was just the three they did a three piece uh record like a couple years ago with yeah. They did it at uh, Dave Grohl Studio, that's Studio 606, and it just oh, right. slams, man. They just, Sweet. They, and the songs are there. Yeah. yeah, but you guys would fit perfect with those guys, for cool. sure. So, um, I don't know. I was kind of wanting to dig into the, the early history of the band, because I'm, okay. I'm, I'm kind of a new fan. Yeah. Um, you guys started in 2001, San Diego. Yeah. Give us a brief, like, history, if you could. Like the well, from the first record on, <laughs> well, <laughs> as brief as you can. Wrap up your uh, life over the last sixteen <laughs> I, I years in a couple paragraphs, I, please. I guess the reason why I ask is because you know there's in this kind of scene, it, it's always good to get the word out to as many people as possible. For sure, you know, because rock and roll, I think, is kind of more in the underground these days, especially this kind of rock and roll that you guys are playing. I know that the kind that we play too. So, right. even though you guys have been around a long time, it's cool to like push it to new people if you can so i guess that's kind of our job that's yeah. kind of why we started this podcast anyway it's because we just you know we're underground we're you know weekend warriors we're music fans yeah and music fans and we've been going to these shows anyway so it's like i want to get the word out to the bands that we love the most because they're not on the radio for the most part aside mm -hmm. from you know the sporadic <laughs> show here and there so i guess that's why i'm asking and if they would where we probably wouldn't like them they should be <laughs> <laughs> i'd put a 30 minute song on the radio you know <laughs> fuck yeah <laughs> <laughs> that, that's my taste. <laughs> so, brief history of the band. Uh, yeah, we first started playing together in 2001. But, um, you know, even back then, Isaiah didn't live in town. So it was kind of just a couple times when he was around visiting. Okay. Um, fast forward a few years. We didn't, our first record didn't come out until 2005. Okay. Because um, I was touring with Rocket from the Crypt a lot. And then, uh, then we signed to TP Records around 2006, 2007. Okay, yeah. We came out with a second record then. Started touring around that time, actually. Okay. So there was a lot of dead, a couple dead years in there before um, right. 2007, really. So since then, that's when we kind of been doing more activity, you know, touring and stuff. Uh, but yeah, we uh, have two records on TP, a live record on them. Um, we've toured the world a bunch of times, been to Australia like four times, Japan. Um, yeah, we've been pretty busy, you know? But yeah, this uh, first record of Nuclear Blast is kind of just a, another step. And, is this and, a multi-album uh, deal or you just doing yeah, one I think it's like two. Yeah, oh, cool. These yeah. two, not two, nothing too crazy, but yeah. So. Right on. That sounds good. Again, man, it's, it's a great album. I love all the songs on them and uh, hopefully you guys Thank come you. back through town soon. Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah, we were here like, I'm trying to think. It was probably a little over a year ago. Yeah. Or so, maybe two years ago. I've always heard the name, mm -hmm. you know, around in the circle. Because, I mean, we're in that, you know, 
like you said, you know, clutch and COC, and you guys yeah. are circling in that orbit. Right. So I've always heard it. I, th- I think it's just a matter of there's so much to listen to now. You no, know? totally. Like, you, yeah. And I get and it's obsessed. so easy to yeah. be able to listen to it. You know, you can yeah. just go anywhere. And, and I get obsessed with music, it. and not, I've been listening to the record for the last few days, and it's like, okay, I'm going to be listening to this for a couple months at least, you know. Cool. But, uh, yeah, that's, that. you know, I just equated to that, but... um. I'm hooked now, man. I'm down. Sweet. I'm good to go. So I'm curious. I'm, I've just happened to l- to look at the, the the radio there. What is uh What is Earthless jamming when they're on the road? What What are you guys listening to? Oh man, we're so all over the place. Uh, on the way here, um, we listen to uh, uh, some dub reggae stuff. Some really like oh, heavy yeah. bass, echoed out dub. Um, and then we listen to Discharge. Uh, some good old early 80s hardcore and then um, we listened to um, some old really obscure psychedelic rock oh, me, hold on you can come in. Get a key. yeah we're good we've been inter- interrupted many a podcast uh, yeah that's that's the life yeah no worries <laughs> no, no worries. come on in you want to talk <laughs> <now? laughs> it's fun <laughs> That was our tour manager there. And, um, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, we, um, what else? His voicemail's not set up. So <laughs> yeah, we know that. Tried it. it's, all, <laughs> all good. it's like, we'll just get one of the dudes and yeah. do, it, do it old school stuff. That's all I can think of what we're listening to on the way here. Oh, that's cool, but, man. Yeah. I was just getting an idea. We're all over the place, though. Like yeah. jazz and all sorts of stuff. How'd you start playing drums? Or do you play um, other things other than drums? Or you just, yeah, just I play guitar. Drums? I kind of just mess with whatever. Are you drums like all the bands you're playing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, how did I start playing drums? Uh, I just had that question too. Kiss the other day. Yeah. Yeah. Just being a fuck yeah. Like five years old and seeing first Kiss concert. We and, went. We were uh, thirteen years old. Kiss. Sweet. Van Halen, Deep Purple. Yeah. All Grand the, Funk. The yeah. My, you know, I had uncles that listened to just all that stuff. So right fuck on. yeah. That's kind of how. And it never left. It. <clears throat> well, I don't know. What do you think? You want to? You want to wrap it up or? Sure. I would probably let you get back in. You got a you got a sound check, huh? Uh, I'm gonna do other stuff too. <laughs> There's always merch. something to do, I guess. Yes, so. Always. <laughs> okay, so where can we find Black Heaven out this Friday? That would be March 16th. March right? 16th, yeah. Right on. Black Heaven comes out. So. Vinyl. Yep. Vinyl CD. Cool. All that other stuff. You guys have You're it. Not selling shows? them right now. We have it here at the show. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah so. Right on. Excellent. Pick it up if you uh, like the physical oh, yeah. copy. Right on, Black Heaven on Nuclear Blast Records this Friday. It's killer. Go fucking buy that thing, man. Thanks a lot, you guys, Go. for having me. Thank you for doing this, man. Appreciate it. Cheers. Cheers.